And then I let her use my credit cards because she said she needed to travel back and forth. And um, then she'd buy cartons of cigarettes at the gas station and sell them for drugs. And there was just a lot of things. And it changed her so much since she'd been on these drugs and dancing. And I know the dancing is what caused it all. And in your life, that as a mother, obviously you feel very, very badly about this. Yes, and you I as do, a daughter. She wasn't raised that way at all. She. Let's find out about what led her to do this. Come on out, Tammy. Tammy, you heard that both your mother and your daughter, what they have said. Is it, first, is it true? Did you leave her alone a yeah, lot? Yeah, but they're talking about the past, Sally. They're talking about two and a half years ago okay. when I first did start dancing, when I was on my drugs, when I was leaving my kids alone. For two, the past two and a half years, I've remarried. I've straightened my life out a lot. She I has. have been clean. She has. I come home every night. I do not leave my kids home alone now. I regret what I did, and I admit I was a bad mother. I did do you a do lot of things. It. All right. But now, what's I, bothering them now is the stripping. I'm not going to quit. I enjoy dancing. I enjoy. <laughs> I need to make money. I need to make money. If tell that, me what. Yeah, but Mike tell me what money, led he? you to do this. Your mother says you don't need to do it, and your daughter says you don't. Why do you say you do? Because I've learned to live having so much money that it's hard when, when you buy things and you're used to having them good things and you don't want to give them good things up. Even if it makes the family embarrassed, even I'm if... I'm 31 years old. I'm an adult. As long as I take care of my kids... All right. Could she give it up now? I don't think she... Oh, and I, I kind of stay at my sister's, um, you know... I'm working you're, most of the day. You're kind of drifting around. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's hear from Salsa. Come on out, Salsa. Salsa, you were listening backstage, and uh, you heard what Tracy was saying. Anything he said that wasn't right? Um, except for him living in the car. He, I mean, he has places to go. He just rather wants to be at home where wants, he should be. So he wants to live me. in the car. No, he wants to be with me at home. And so he chooses not to go stay at these people's places. And Have you, know, you thrown him out of the car, out of the house? Out of the house. I asked him to leave for a while until we can figure this out. It was getting too much fighting in the house with my kids. And Okay. Uh, you told our producers that he's made you feel like you're a street hooker. Is that right? <laughs> Basically. Okay. No trust. What, how did the dancing get started? Um, about four years ago, my kids were about six months old. And um, I was very... You say they're both the, uh, twins. They're twins. Aww. Okay. Yes, four years old. And um, I wasn't having any um, emotional support from anybody, families, their family, my family. And um, at the time, I was just needing to have some money. I didn't want to be on the public system, public assistance system. Wanted to do for myself. Like you Tammy's know? story. I'm getting the we, same we don't, story. We don't want, we're not prostitutes, okay? We don't sell our bodies. Nobody touches us. When we dance, nobody is allowed to touch us. We okay. need to on a stage. Let me, let me get on with it. On Salsa, you met him. Did you know he was trying to reform you? He's admitted he was trying to reform you. <laughs> no, I, I knew that he, the situation that he... I'm going to talk to you. Come on out. <laughs> Amber. I don't think any of us have a problem with wanting to be rich and famous. An awful lot of people want that right. and, and, and really understand that kind of drive that it takes. It also takes unbelievable amount of work. But your mother is extremely disappointed about your choice in careers. Yeah. Well, first off, I, I do want to say that, you know, um, my goal was not just to be, you know, pose nude for Playboy. That wasn't my whole life. 
Um, I want to be an actress. What was the goal? I want to be an actress. That was my stepping stone. Okay. Why not go to acting class, good acting classes like they have around the country, get into small roles off-Broadway, off-Broadway, small roles, repertory companies, and really study your craft day and night. Why go the sexual route? Sally, um, can I say something to Amber real quick? Amber, my dream is to be an actress. That is my dream since I've been like this, okay? And I don't think I could ever pose nude for Playboy. I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't even like people seeing my body. I don't care if it was my boyfriend or whatever. I don't, I like to. Well, she's saying what I'm have saying. Have my body to myself. Amber, I have a body and, like and that, I'd do it. <laughs> Amber, why not study? Well, you know, and, and that's your, and Shannon, and that is your choice, and I totally respect that, because a lot of people believe that way. And I look at it like this, there's, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't do. Magazine-wise, there's a lot of men's magazines out there that makes me sick, but Playboy, is very respected, and um, and I think you know most people do it like that. And, and I and I understand if you know a few people out here don't like it, you know. But um, it's actually a men's and women's magazine. There are mm -hmm. plenty of women have. It's the guy's turn. In case you think this is an only a woman thing, I want you to meet Scott and his fiancee Cheryl. Cheryl is pregnant, right? Five months, four months. Scott says it's been his lifelong infatuation to take his clothes off for screaming excited women. <laughs> Cheryl says they're gonna be married, I think, in two months with a baby on the way and a wedding. If Scott takes it off, she may take off. Uh, <laughs> Let me ask Cheryl first, is this a, uh, just an ego trip for you, for him? Not for me, for him, because look at him. He, he, thinks, <laughs> he thinks he's all that anyway, and I think that that would boost his ego a little bit more. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I mean, I think he looks good, right? Right? Yeah. But he, he just needs to know it, you know what I mean? And you don't want him to do it? No. All right, why do you want to do this? It's just been something that I thought might be exciting, you know? I this idea came into my mind, it was after years of financial aid troubles, the whole, the regular story. And uh, I'd heard an ad for one of these places. I remember being offended by that ad. How can they advertise on the radio? It's prostitution, it's sleaze. Here I was a few weeks later, had a financial crisis happening, and the idea came back into my mind, and I immediately chastised myself. How could I possibly even consider that? I must lack morals to even think of it. And in the next moment, I thought, well, you don't know what you what you're thinking of. You don't know anything about it. You're reacting out of fear and ignorance. Just and I don't like want to audience. spend my life doing That's that. Right. So I called the place. And I went over there during the day and had an interview. And it was a job interview. And it was clean. And it was um, completely legitimate. But I didn't believe it. I still, I took it a minute at a time. I now, came what did you evening. need this money for that you couldn't get any other way? Well, I had been waitressing, I had been scooping ice cream, uh, I had a house cleaning business for three years, all while I was putting myself through Brown University. Okay. So, you were working extremely hard, every time your money didn't come through, you even left Brown, went I left Brown for three cleaned years. houses, got the money, went back to Brown, right. which is an Ivy League school. Right. Right now, you need the money, and you're completely out, and this you is, go on the job interview. Right, it's halfway through a semester, and and I really didn't feel like leaving again. I to assume that the behavior of, of a mother doesn't have an impact on an adolescent daughter, I think that's unrealistic. <laughs> and it's not a moral issue. It's I not a moral issue. I, I took I took responsibility for saying that for two, for a year I was a bad mother. Okay, it's not. I'm I not never calling said you a bad mother. Better now. I'm for two saying, and a half years. What, I have straightened my life out. What happens with your daughter is that she gets hurt. She's at a time of life when she's beginning to blossom as a woman, and at that age, kids yeah. cannot deal with the parents' sexuality, I and it's a sexual that. job, you know. But my kids aren't exposed to it. I don't take my kids to work with me. I know. My but children they know do about not it. see what and I do. she was do. teased about it. I know so that. that becomes a problem. All right, let's get to salsa quickly. In terms of, of salsa, I think what happened between the two of them, they got into some kind of a power struggle with one another. I don't think anyone has the right to control us, but I do think that what you have to look at is if you're in, in, in an intimate relationship with someone, there has to be compromise. It's not, I'm just going to do what I feel like doing. 
And in, in terms of Amber, I think that Amber is probably very talented, but she would probably be smarter to have something special that would make her stand out from the crowd. She's looking at the short-term results rather than the long-term results of what we'll she We'll be right do. back. Heidi gives advice. Yeah.